All right, so in this video, we are going to go through the application of loads, which is uh, within the load module. So if we click here, the load module is pretty much, we are going to assign uh, loads, which is the first icon over here, create loads. We are going to assign boundary conditions. So these are the two main ones that we are going to uh, use. The third icon is like for creating predefined fields. So this is if you want to create like, for instance, uh, pre-stresses or a predefined field, like uh, if you're doing thermal analysis or something like that, and you want to apply like temperature to begin with and so on. Uh, so we are pretty much dealing with the first two uh, icons. Those are the ones that we are going to focus on for now. Uh, if I go back to my problem, so my problem, I want to, I have pretty much three things I want to do. I want to apply an axial load at the column top. I want to apply displacement at the beam end monotonically. And I need to apply boundary conditions here, fixed boundary condition at the column base. So in order to do all these uh, things, the, the, the thing that we want to do is that it's not recommended when you are applying loads or boundary conditions to apply those to surfaces or to edges. The appropriate way in this case is that you want to apply these things to a single node. Like for instance here, if I zoom at the top, I want to apply the load here to a single node. But the, the problem is if I do that, so for instance, if I go here to create load, and this load, let's say that this would be the axial, let me call it column axial load. And this will be applied during the loading step. Uh, there are different types, of course, of loads, uh, concentrated force, moment, pressure, edge load, uh, gravity, bolt load, many, many things. So here I'm going to apply concentrated force. So then you should select a point to apply this. So in general, let's say that we have a point here in the middle. Uh, if you select a point and you apply the load at a point, this is not recommended because later on this will cause stress concentration at the point and this can cause convergence problem. And in most uh, practical reasons, this is not uh, realistic. In reality, this load that we want to apply here at the end it's actually being applied to the entire surface of the column, the entire edge. So how we can do that? So for doing this, for applying this load and for applying the displacement at the beam end and for applying the uh, boundary conditions, the fixed boundary condition at the column base, what we want to do, we want to use the reference point concept. So if I go back here to the interaction module, you will see all the way down here, this X icon that says RP. So this is create reference point. So we are going to create reference point. This reference point, we are going to apply all our loads at this reference point. And this reference point will be connected to a surface or to an edge using a rigid body constraint. So this is what we are going to do. So let me create now reference point. So if I click on that, so now Abacus is telling me select point to act as a reference point, or I can select directly from my uh, viewport using the vertices highlighted here in yellow, or I can just provide X, Y, Z. So perhaps the easiest one, if I want to select the column end, so I will select this point. So if I select this point, that's it. So now I created a reference point. So this is RP1. This is by default, it's called RP1 and dash one. And then if I create another one, it will be RB dash two and so on. So now let me create another reference point at the top of the column. But if I look here, if I want to create one at the top of the column, actually there is no point here in the middle uh, of the web. I see one here and I see one there, but if I, I don't want to do one of those, I just want to be uh, in the center line. So how we can do that? Well, we can add the X, Y, Z uh, coordinate of this point. And since we already know that 
our principal x, y, z are there. They are in the center line. If you remember, this is what we did. So this means that I can easily say that this top point at the top has an x equal to uh, 0 and z equal to 0 and a y equal to the length of the column which is uh, 1500 millimeter and then if I click enter so right here if I zoom you see now so I have a reference point over there by the way uh, let's say that you messed up this thing with the location of the principal axis uh, location and you are not sure about uh, the coordinates uh, that's very easy so what you need to do well let me before i discuss this actually sorry let me uh, while we are still doing the reference point let me do the reference point at the base so this is the one at the base so this would be at zero 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 actually so that's it so now i have reference point three reference point two reference point one and then i can close that uh, how can we see the reference point here if I go to the assembly features so here you see the three reference point and there is also the datum the coordinate system the XYZ that's already has been generated automatically when we created the assembly so reference point one I can rename it uh, we can call it RP beam free end this is a more descriptive uh, naming uh, rp2 let's call this rp column uh, top end and let me call this one uh, rename rp column base okay so now they have a descriptive uh, names so i can refer to those much easier uh, so yeah let me uh, say that if you want to find the coordinates of any point okay so you can do that uh, if you go to tools if you go to query over here then you can check many things you can check distances for instance if i click on distance i can you see here it says select the first entity for distance calculation so if i want to measure for instance the distance between this point and this point then in the message box over here here it tells me that the distance is 200 okay so that's it, tell, it tells me the coordinates of each point and it tells me the distance between the two points uh, if i click between on point node and if i select a given node like let's say this one on the vertices and i click done over here coordinates of the interesting point is 5 comma uh, 1500 comma zero so you can check the coordinates and then you can create uh, another points using uh, these coordinates so you can check many many things uh, also regarding like angles uh, elements uh, this is of course once we do the meshing so you can check many many things and like geometric diagnostics so there are many options again in abacus but uh, we are going to discuss those in more details later on so now that we created our features, the reference points, now let's go back to, actually before we go back uh, and apply the loads at the reference points, we need now to define the rigid body constraints. So we need now to tie these reference points with the appropriate surfaces or edges. Because right now these reference points, they have no physical meaning. They are just points in the space. All right they are not connected to the actual uh, like this color this reference point called beam free end it's not connected to the beam end although it looks like it's at the edge so if you go back to the create constraints in the interaction module and if you go to rigid body and then this one let's call it rigid rigid body beam end and click continue and then you have this uh, dialog you need to select two things first you need to select the reference point so if you click on this blue arrow over here 
and in your viewport you need to select the reference point so I just select it right there that's it it says picked right now and now I need to select the region that this reference point is connected to so by doing that there are many types of doing this uh, constraint there is a pin constraint there is a tie constraint there is a body rigid constraint so what I'm going to use I'm going to use the pin one and the pin one is pretty much is going to connect the reference point with the surface or the edge as a pin so basically only the the, the link degrees of freedom will be translational at degrees of freedom not the rotational ones and then i click on the blue one arrow over here and then i need to select the regions so i will just select the edges over here for the free end which actually by the way you could have done it by the way by defining a set earlier on uh, instead of uh, selecting this from the viewport okay so i click done and that's it i don't need to modify anything else and i say okay so right now you have this indicator here these yellow uh, circles indicating that you have a, a constraint type at this end that's it so i need to do the same for the top and the same for the base of the column uh, you can just copy this from the manager and let's call this rigid body uh, column top okay and then I can edit I can select the reference point this one and I can let I can select the uh, nodes so here I can select the surfaces so although it says nodes we are selecting surfaces because these surfaces are going to be translated to uh, mesh nodes once we mesh it there will be nodes uh, everywhere so that's it and I click done okay so we're done with the one on the top let's make another one a copy so this is column base okay edit let's reselect the reference point it's this one and let's reselect the pin nodes let me rotate let's zoom here and select these areas by the way so i'm selecting this by holding the shift button and clicking all these areas which might take a little bit of a long time depending on all these partitions that we have so if we want to select easier than that you can uh, if you can visualize this in the xy direction like for instance like this and then you can select the in this entire surface if i do that you see everything is selected so everything inside the box has been selected which this is not what we want you want just to select everything inside the box not everything that's crossing the box so if you want to do that actually this is a very useful thing that you can do from here so you see over here it says select entities so right now the option that we have is every anything inside or crossing the drag shape will be selected if we want to modify that hold the button and you can select this other option so select entities inside the drag shape only so if i select this and i redo that so now i only select the edge so this is very very useful when you are trying to select things okay so always remember that so done okay and we're finished so now we have defined all the reference point and all the rigid body constraints so this now clears the way for us to go to the loads and apply the loads and the displacements and everything else about the conditions at the reference points directly so we'll do this in the next video